Well, when Michael Bellman started his career as a fresh-faced 16-year-old, very eager, he had one goal in mind, and that was to honour the memory of his late grandfather, Pat Bellman. 27 years on, and I have no doubt Michael has done exactly that. I caught up with Michael during his visit to Club and Angle. Well, Michael, good to catch up with you. As I mentioned in the introduction, 27 years on, I think you've done the memory of your late grandfather extremely proud. Yeah, it's been uh, a better career than I could ever have imagined, and... Uh... Yeah, it's it's great, and his memory lives on tonight at Tarang. Yeah, we've just uh, had the running of the Pat Bellman Memorial, taken out by Morvar and one of my favourite drivers, I've got to admit, James Herbertson. Yeah, they always say, because we've both got red hair, that I'm his father, so, yeah, very proud of James and what he's achieved. The fact that you're here driving for Kari Males with Sergeant Lou, you would have been driving Morvar? Yeah, I got the offer to drive Morvar and all Herney in the pole, and... Uh, it would have been a great honour to take Pops Memorial out as um, it was my first race winner. Yeah, let's turn the clock back to that fateful day. Your grandfather was involved in a very thrilling finish and as the horses crossed the line, suffered a heart attack. Yeah, he had a massive heart attack and they couldn't revive him, unfortunately, but um, we look at it, he died doing something that he loved and um, on one of his favourite horses, so... Yeah, there's a silver lining at the end of everything, I suppose. And, Michael, that was th despite the best attempts of the paramedics who were on the scene within a moment. Yeah, there was a doctor actually on the track and, and he rushed straight to him, but um, despite their best efforts, they couldn't revive him and, uh, yeah, the rest is history. You started your career as a 16-year-old, as I mentioned, but it was way back when, as far as you're concerned, because the family involvement, your, your dad Neville, your mum Diane, have always been involved in harness racing and successfully. Yeah, they have, and pop before that, so yeah, I was always been born into it and uh, always had the horses around, so I was probably destined not to do much else. <laughs> you started out in the pony trots? Yeah, had a go at the pony trots, and that was a good foundation for us, and uh, my sister had a go as well, and we always had the ponies in the backyard and then graduated to the bigger horses. Based at Ararat, and you always consider yourself a freelance driver? Yeah, pretty much, that's just the way it's worked out. I've been willing to travel far and wide for a drive, and if people are good enough to put me on them, good enough to turn up and, and steer them for them. One thing your mum and yourself have in common, the love of the Horsham circuit. Yeah, Horsham's an hour up the road and it's always been a, a great track to us. Um, mum dominated the showgrounds track and, and I've been lucky enough to win the driver of the year there this year as well as a few junior driver titles, so it's been a happy stomping ground. It's always good to have early heroes or idols to look up to and you started out with some great people influencing your career Peter and Karen Manning and also Andy Gath. Yeah I was lucky enough to work for Peter and Karen and Andy and Kez has always been like a big sister to me and um, been lucky enough to spend a lot of time with them and and got to see how it was done differently from what mum and ourselves do it so it was a great foundation early. Michael if there was something to take away from being with uh, Peter and Karen and also with Andy what would that be? Oh, just there's no limit to how fit you can get your horses and they've always um, been able to take them to that next level and, and where some people would back off them, they, they're they not afraid to put their foot down and work them harder to get more out of them and, and it's, their results have shown over a long period of time. Mike, it's tough to get drivers and as we've mentioned, a freelance driver, but you've had a very good career as far as being a regular over the 100 mark in 2015-16, your best career 140. Yeah, just probably hard work and, like I said, not afraid to go to whatever meeting it takes to, to get those winners and chase them far and wide. You consider yourself to be a late bloomer as a trainer, why is that? Oh, it's just the way it worked out. Mum always had the horses and it wasn't really something that I was that keen on early and then later on, as I got a bit older, I thought I'd turn my hand to it and, and I've been lucky enough to have a few nice ones. What's the best of them? Uncle Wingnut would surely be one of them. Uncle Wingnut was a great horse to me. He took me to a Hunter Cup and things like that for the Costa family. They were great supporters of mine around the Mildura and Swan Hill and Nyer areas and um, got a personal favourite of my own, Mr Reese. He won the Ararat Cup for me and, and won a few in, in town and took us on a great ride. Now that you've entered the training ranks, how many horses do you have in work? We usually have 10 to a dozen all the time. Um, we always hover around that and sort of like doing a lot of pre-trainers for other people, so that side of things has been really good. You get a great deal of assistance from Shannon O'Sullivan. Yeah, Shannon's been with me for about seven months now and she's been a great asset to the team and she's uh, doing that and Trot's vision and everything else that she's got going on, so she's doing a great job for us. Yeah, she's a very talented young lady. She's also from an outstanding harness racing family, so she knows what it's all about.
yeah, she's uh, not shy of knowing what a good horse takes. And with her father, Jim, um, he's a legend of the game. And, yeah, we all hope to emulate what he could do. He's certainly one of the great characters, Jim. And as you said, he's just a legend. Yeah, he is. Um, he's done it all and he's had some nice horses and been all around the world doing it. So, yeah, he's still passionate today. Well, we can consider it around the world to some extent. You visited New Zealand in 2003, defending your title you won in 2002 at Harrell Park, the Australasian Young Drivers. Yeah, that was a great honour to be A, selected and then, yeah, go on to win it at Harrell Park. It was a great thrill and, uh, yeah, we didn't have that much luck in New Zealand, but we took a wealth of knowledge away from it. Yeah, the one title you won up against the likes of Gavin Fitzpatrick and uh, Gary Hall Jr. Those particular events, uh, Michael, are always tough because of the class of your opposition, but a lot of luck comes into play, doesn't it, with the horses, the luck of the draw, and then the luck of the draw. Yeah, it does. You've got to be on those right horses and get them in the spot and uh, just try and give them every chance that you can. Yeah, but it's certainly a wonderful learning experience and the friendships you make. It is. I've made a lot of friends out of it and still to this day you come back to here and meet the people you went through it with and, and catch up with them. It's always great. You're here with a very exciting prospect, Sergeant Lou, prepared by Kari Males. What are you expecting from Sergeant Lou tonight and moving forward? Yeah, hopefully the ultimate goal is to win tonight and give the ballot exempt from the derby. That would be the main goal, but uh, it's more of a see where he's at sort of thing and how he's going to measure up to that class, but uh, very exciting at this moment what he's done so far. What type of horse is he as far as being an individual and also his uh, mannerisms? Yeah, he's very quiet for a colt. Um, he's travelled up with La Belle Bajur and she's a mare and you wouldn't even know that. He stands there really relaxed and good, So, and the trip away from home will do him the world of good. Is your horse that he can no doubt use his gate seed to be prominent here at Club and Angle? Yeah, he's got that bit of toughness about him too. Um, tonight the draws have been in our favour, so if we can hold a forward position, that'd be great. And he's just got great cruising speed. And both you and Curry are looking forward, considering him a very ideal type of horse for a derby. Yeah, he just seems at the moment that he's got that speed and stamina and, and the, the, the distance won't worry him, we don't think. So, yeah, at the moment, it's, it's very exciting to see where he can take us. Michael, sometimes it takes a, a visiting horse, sometimes a driver as well, a little bit of uh, time to get accustomed to this Menangle track, especially that run home. It's a long straight. Yeah, he's used to working up a long straight. Uh, Paul and Kari's track's got about a 600 metre straight and it's a gradual climb uphill, so we're not too concerned about that thing. It was more how he'd travel and handle the trip, but so far he's ticked every box. Well, you've sort of been going through some tough times back in Victoria. You've got floods and fires and the damaging winds we've had in Victoria. How did you come through all that? We were lucky. The only thing we sort of lost at home was our race meeting on Tuesday night, but um, family and friends that were close by at Pomonal and, and Dadzels Bridge, they were hit fairly hard, so our thoughts go out to them and, uh, yeah, a lot of houses got lost, but um, they've still got their lives, I suppose. Yes, Mike, it's always a great, uh, bigger picture. We, we're having a lot of fun here at Club and Angle. We can see the great horses and the great drivers, but there's always that bigger picture of people going through it very tough all over the country. Yeah, it doesn't matter how hard we think we're doing it. There's always someone else there that's worse off than us, so we can be thankful we do what we love. Michael, good luck tonight and also moving forward. Good to catch up with you. Good on you. Thanks for having me.